exactly the same. But I didn't. I went back to the United States and I started university, which was MIT, which is a very technical, scientific, um, you know, secular spirit university. And it's also a very prestigious university, so of course, you know, everyone there thinks that they're the smartest people in the world and know more than anyone else. And um, it was under that spell of that environment, I essentially lost my Jewish faith. The um, view of the world there was that religion is just some kind of, you know, medieval superstition that man came up with to explain things before there was science to, you know, really give the true explanation. And I fell under the sway of that pseudo-scientific worldview that science has all the answers and, and religion is just myth. So I fell into the uh, deepest despair of my life at that point, uh, a kind of existential despair. And it was in that that I was walking in nature early one morning, uh, just lost in my thoughts. That's the only solace I found would be to go to some beautiful place, you know, in the middle of nature. Uh, so I was just walking along, and I had long since, I mean, I was essentially an atheist at that point. I had long since um, given up on any idea of God or religion. And I received the most spectacular grace in my life. As I was walking along from one moment to the next, the curtain between earth and heaven disappeared, and I found myself in the presence of God, very knowingly in the presence of God, in a very intimate uh, uh, conversation with God, so to speak, seeing my life and experiencing my life as I would see it after I died and looked back over it in the presence of God. And I saw um, instantaneously, I saw how I would feel about everything after I died. I saw that my two greatest regrets when I died would be number one, all of the time and energy I had wasted worrying about not being loved when every moment of my existence I was held in an ocean of love greater than I ever imagined could exist, coming from this all-knowing, all-loving God. And the other regret would be every hour I had wasted doing nothing of value in the eyes of heaven. Um, I saw my life as though, um, you know, all my life I had been greedily accumulating uh, piles of Monopoly money, you know, that brightly, papered, uh, brightly colored paper money from the game of Monopoly, when right next to it there was a stack of gold coins that I had been ignoring, which would be, of course, merit in heaven. I saw how foolish it was to be greedy for things that wouldn't be doing me any good at all, even a hundred years hence, you know, when I'm dead, whereas I could have been greedy, so to speak, to accumulate treasure in heaven, from which I would very literally be benefiting a hundred million years from now. Now, I know this isn't the healthiest attitude in the world, but I was a Harvard Business School marketing professor, so I have an excuse. You know, everything was net present value, everything was maximizing returns, and I was still seeing this a little bit in that way. So I, I didn't see the error in being greedy, I just saw how stupidly greedy I had been. And if I want to be smart and greedy, the only thing that made sense would be to try to be as great a saint as possible, essentially. So um, I was walking along still, and um, I prayed, uh, to this God who was so incredibly present. Let me know your name so I know what religion to follow to worship and serve you properly. I don't mind if you're Buddha and I have to become a Buddhist. I don't mind if you're Krishna and I have to become Hindu. I don't mind if you're Apollo and I have to become a Roman pagan as long as you're not Christ and I have to become Christian. <laughs> and I very literally prayed that. And uh, God respected that prayer, Christ respected that prayer, and he didn't tell me who he was. Um, and I wasn't ready to hear it, obviously. Yeah. But I did one smart thing, which is every night before going to sleep, I would say a short prayer that I had made up to learn the name of my Lord and Master and God who had revealed himself to me. Bef you know, I'd say this prayer just before going to sleep. And uh, a year to the day after that initial experience, and I know it was a year to the day because I prayed in Thanksgiving that day um, to before going to sleep. A year to the day after that first experience, I went to sleep, and I thought I was awoken by a hand gently on my shoulder and led to a room and left alone with the most beautiful young woman I could ever imagine. And I knew without being told that it was the Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, when I found myself in her presence, all I wanted to do was throw myself on my knees and somehow honor her appropriately. 
In fact, the first thought that crossed my mind was, oh my gosh, I wish I at least knew the Hail Mary, but I didn't. Now, I'll say a couple of things about uh, that initial part of that experience. First of all, I now understand my body was asleep in bed. I thought I was awake at the time. My memory represents it as though I were awake, but I understand that if there had been a camera in the room, it would have shown me asleep in bed. But anyway, um, when I found myself in her presence, I was just overwhelmed, overwhelmed, and uh, actually lifted into a state of ecstasy simply by the love that flowed from her. And as beautiful as she was to look at, even more uh, powerfully affecting was the sound of her voice. When she spoke, her voice was like what makes music music. It was like the essence of music. And it carried with it uh, a love that just flowed through all of my fibers and lifted me up into a state of ecstasy. And um, the first thing she said to me was she offered to answer any questions I might have for her. Um, as I mentioned, uh, my first thought when I was in her presence was I wish I at least knew the Hail Mary so I could honor her appropriately. So when she offered to answer any questions I might have for her, I kind of wanted to ask her to teach me the Hail Mary, but I was too proud to admit that I didn't know it. So as a kind of indirect way, I, um, I said, what's your favorite prayer to you? Figuring she'd teach me the Hail Mary, right? Um, her first response was a little bit coy. It was, I love all prayers to me. But I was a little bit pushy. Maybe that's because I'm a New York Jew and maybe not. But I said, but you must love some prayers to you more than others. And she relented and she recited a prayer. Uh, but it was in Portuguese and I didn't know any Portuguese. So all I could do was make the effort to remember the first few syllables phonetically, and the next morning when I woke up, I wrote them down phonetically, and then later when I met a Portuguese Catholic woman, I asked her to recite all of the Marian prayers in Portuguese so I could try to identify it, and to the best of my ability, I identified it as, O oh Mary conceived without sin, pray for us, have recourse to thee.